Welcome back, folks, to WrestleRant. We're here today. I'm talking about this Tuesday in Texas, as seen on the WWE Network from 1991. I'm Graham Giusin Matthews. Opening the show for the Intercontinental Championship, Bret Hart defending the gold against Skinner. In an alright match, I mean, a decent match for Skinner, who was well past his prime by this point. He was in really no shape to compete. Didn't have an awful showing here. This wasn't really that great of a match, but considering Bret Hart was involved, this was definitely one of his lesser memorable, you know, title defenses, one of his lesser, greater classics, so to speak. So not really a good match, not the best match to kick off the show with, but in the end, it had the right result. Bret Hart still the Intercontinental Champion. Randy Savage versus Jake Roberts up next in a good match. It's funny because the match only went six minutes, and for a feud that had as much bad blood as it did, for as ruthless of a rivalry as this was, the match felt like it got cut short very abruptly at only six minutes. And it was a good match while it lasted. They would have better matches down the line. But it really felt like this match wasn't what it could have been. And the post-match stuff, with the two continuing to go at it and just beating the crap out of each other, Jake Roberts slapping Miss Elizabeth, that post-match angle was great. Jake Roberts just being the true heel that he was and really... And you don't really see those kind of heels nowadays. I know Jericho did something similar many years ago with uh, Shawn Michaels' wife and, like, legitimately hit her by accident, albeit. But still, that angle was heated. You know, we saw something similar here with Jake Roberts, Miss Elizabeth, and Randy Savage. And really added this extra element to the feud. So while the match was kind of underwhelming and not what it could have been, for the time it was given, it was a good match, but kind of disappointing considering it didn't go longer. But the post-match stuff was really, really good. And what I thought was funny was the fact that the post-match stuff with all three of these people was probably longer than the match itself. Uh, it went on for a while, like 10 minutes or so. So uh, that was good, though. Good interviews from Roberts beforehand and Savage after afterwards. So good stuff all around. After that, we had the British Bulldog versus the Warlord. Why it, Why this match was held, I have no idea. And the match got 12 minutes. So here's the thing. The fact that Savage and Roberts got cut short by a couple of minutes, by a number of minutes for whatever reason, and then this match was given 12 to 14 minutes blows my mind because this match sucked. The Bulldog was great, don't get me wrong, but the Warlord was not. Um, he was not good whatsoever. He really had no in-ring chemistry at all with the British Bulldogs. This was a very lackluster matchup, and... Not a really good match whatsoever. Like I said, I really have no reason, I really have no idea as to why it was held in the first place. There probably was a reason behind it, but there was no obvious, you know, uh, feud at stake. I have no idea why this took place after Savage and Roberts, why it got more time than Savage and Roberts. It just really wasn't a good match whatsoever that really did not need to happen, What you know, at all, considering a championship wasn't on the line, nothing was on the line, so a very forgettable encounter from Bulldog and Warlord. After that, Repo Man and Ted DiBiase taking on El Matador and Virgil. Kind of, a, you would think, on, on paper, a throwaway match, and it was a really a meaningless match in the end, but for what it was, it was well-wrestled, it was fun, it was enjoyable, uh, nothing too, you know, blockbuster, not that blockbuster of a bout, but still, for what it was, it was fun. All four people put forth a good effort. Um, they had a decent outing, and they had a fun match. So Repo Man, in the end, and Teddy Biasi scoring the victory over El Matador and Virgil, so good for what that was. And then the main event, the infamous main event, the WWE Championship rematch from Survivor Series between Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker. So Hogan talks about that match in his book where Savage, or rather, uh, Taker, excuse me, had dropped Hogan on his head inadvertently. I mean, the, uh, the whole point of the match, the whole finish was planned to be him dropping him on his head with the tombstone on top of a chair to score the WWE Championship. But Hogan was legitimately hurt in that match. Um, I think he slipped, he was sweaty or whatever, and he slipped and he actually hit his head on the chair. So Hogan was like nearly knocked out and he still feels the pain from that to this day, he said in his book that came out in 2009. Um, so I don't know if that was the... I mean, obviously that was the botch, but I don't know if the original plan was for Undertaker to win the championship. Probably so. But at any rate, they held the championship, or rather a pay-per-view. Uh, two days later, a championship rematch this Tuesday in Texas, obviously only 48 hours removed from Survivor Series. Between Hogan and Taker, the match was just a pinch better than the original match from Survivor Series, still awful by uh, regular standards. So from their original match, it was, a, it was a little bit better, but beyond that, it still sucked. Hogan and Taker just had awful matches, whether it was 1991, 2002, it didn't matter. These two just did not work well together at all. Uh, so this was not a good match. In the end, Hogan beating Taker with a roll-up to win back the WWE Championship, cutting Taker's premier WWE title reign short. At only 48 hours, Hogan's champion once again in the end. Just this made absolutely no sense. It did not make Taker look good. I believe this was Taker's premier loss in WWE, his first ever loss in the company after having debuted one year earlier at Survivor Series. So if so, it came in very anticlimactic fashion after an awful match. Uh, very forgettable title reign and just bad booking all around. So that closed out a very 
underwhelming event that really did not need to happen at all. Um, I believe the whole purpose of this pay-per-view is for WWE to try out Tuesdays as a secondary pay-per-view night. Obviously, it was an epic failure. The buy rate was like a 1.0, and it just the reaction was not there either. So they scrapped the idea. They would not do it again until 2004 with Taboo Tuesday, which also did not last long at all. They only did it for 2004 and 05 with uh, Taboo Tuesday. But beyond that, uh, Tuesday pay-per-views have yet to be a thing, and hopefully they never will be because Tuesdays are just do not work out as a pay-per-view night. Fridays and Saturdays, I could see. Obviously, Sundays, Tuesdays, just... Don't make any sense. So thankfully, this pay-per-view event was an epic failure because overall, it just didn't work out anyway. The main event was awful. The, the opener was, you know, mediocre at best, which isn't really saying much. Considering Skinner, considering Skinner was involved, but not really a good Bret Hart match by regular standards. Savage and Roberts, a kind of underwhelming match with the post-match stuff was good. Uh, the Bulldog and Warlord was awful. And then the Repo Man, Ted DiBiase, El Matador, and Virgil in the tag team match was fun, but ultimately pointless. So overall, not a good show. If you want to watch it for historical reasons, for the fact that it was an epic failure, by all means, go ahead. The show is only... It might be the shortest pay-per-view that WWE ever did at an hour and a half. They might have cut out other stuff. I'm looking at the Wikipedia results right now. There's like nine or eight different dark matches. Why that stuff was cut out, I have no idea. Um, but thankfully it was. The show probably would have dragged otherwise, but it was over just like that, just considering it was an hour and a half long. So if you want to watch it for that reason... Go right ahead. Obviously, the only match worth watching, in my opinion, was Savage and Roberts, but everything else was completely admissible. So that was this Tuesday in Texas from 1991, as seen on the WWE Network. Uh, be sure to stay tuned to my until my next video until we talk about, I believe, one of the 96, 97, 98 pay-per-views. It might have been Breakdown or One Night Only. One of those shows from the late 90s from the Attitude Era. So stay tuned for that in the upcoming you know days to come right here on WrestleRant. But in the meantime, you guys can find me on the Twitter machine at Graham GS and Matthews at WrestleRant. Uh, also on Facebook at facebook.com backslash graham.jason.matthews and right here on YouTube by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. So until next time, guys, I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch you folks down the road.